Right now, at this very second, the ground beneath half a million people in southern Italy is rising, not slowly, not gently, 25 millimeters every single month. That's an inch of earth pushing upward in just 30 days. And deep underground, something is building pressure. One minute ago, new data confirmed what scientists feared. The Phlegrian fields, Europe's most dangerous supervolcano sleeping beneath the city of Pozzuoli and stretching under parts of Naples, just recorded fumarole temperatures hitting 102 degrees Celsius at Pizzirelli. But that's not even the hottest zone. At Bacca Grande, another fumarole is venting gases at 180 degrees. These aren't campfire temperatures. This is water boiling underground, flushing to steam, cracking rock, and forcing its way to the surface with enough violence to throw mud 15 feet into the air. Let me put this in perspective. Since October, the caldera has lifted more than 9 inches in total. Every month, another inch. The GNSS station at Rayoni Terra in Pozzuoli measures this movement with millimeter precision, and the trend line isn't flattening. It's accelerating. Ground that rose 10 millimeters monthly in August now rises 30. That tripling happened in less than six months when Earth moves this fast. It tells us something underneath is demanding space. Fluid, gas, pressure, all three. Seismicity returned just yesterday after seven days of relative quiet. Small tremors, yes. Magnitude 2.1. Bilvinov, magnitude 1.8. But in volcanic terms, silence can be deadlier than noise. When faults stop releasing energy gradually, they store it. They load the crust like a spring being compressed. And when that spring releases, it doesn't happen gently. It happens in swarms. Campi Flegre recorded over 1,000 earthquakes in a single month earlier this year. Burst-like sequences where quakes fire off every 7 seconds. Every 15 seconds. Like a drum beat, the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology published data yesterday showing every single parameter climbing. Soil temperature, fluid pressure, ground uplift, gas flux. Carbon dioxide emissions increased. The hydrothermal system, that massive reservoir of superheated water and steam sitting three kilometers below Pozzuoli, is cooking hotter. Weekly bulletins confirm what drone footage reveals. The Pizzirelli fumarole isn't just hot. It's aggressive, continuous, violent degassing. Mud erupting with enough force to spray observers standing 20 meters away. This isn't some remote wilderness. Pozzuoli has 35,000 residents. The red zone, the area at highest risk, holds 500,000 people. Schools, hospitals, ports, ports. Homes built on Earth that has risen nearly five feet since the early 1980s. That crisis, the one that forced evacuations and left the harbor too shallow for boats, happened when the ground lifted 140 centimeters in two years. Scientists at Stanford just published research showing this isn't magma pushing up, it's water. Groundwater recharging a sealed geothermal reservoir. As the cap rock above that reservoir fractures from pressure, water flashes to steam and the volume expands explosively. Temperature sensors detected a 5 degrees Celsius spike three days before the magnitude 4.4 earthquake in May. And here's what keeps volcanologists awake. Campi Flegre last erupted in 1538. Mmm. Monte Nuovo, a new volcanic cone, formed in one week. One eruption. One week. Historical records describe ground cracks, boiling springs, and continuous earthquakes leading up to that event. We're seeing ground cracks now. We're measuring boiling temperatures now. The earthquakes are here now. So what exactly is happening beneath Pozzuoli right now? Why is the Earth behaving this way after decades of relative stability? The answer lies three to five kilometers underground. Imagine a massive pressure cooker sealed beneath the city. That's the hydrothermal reservoir. 
Scientists using seismic tomography mapped it precisely. They found a fractured zone, a network of cracks running through the rock cap that normally keeps this system contained. Those fractures are the problem. And they're growing. When groundwater seeps down into this super hot zone, it doesn't stay liquid. At temperatures exceeding 300 degrees Celsius deep in the system, water instantly converts to steam. Steam occupies 1700 times more volume than water. That expansion creates hydraulic pressure. Enormous pressure. The kind that can lift an entire city. The Pisarelli fumarole we mentioned earlier. That's a direct window into this process. The mud boiling out isn't just heated dirt. It's saturated with gases from deep below. Hydrogen sulfide. Carbon dioxide. Methane. Chemical analysis shows these gases originate from depths matching the reservoir. The violence of that degassing, the continuous explosive bursts, tells us pressure underground isn't decreasing, it's intensifying. Temperature graphs from the past 14 days show something alarming. Pizzarelli hasn't dropped below 98 degrees Celsius, not once. Two weeks ago, it fluctuated between 85 and 95. Now the baseline shifted higher and stays there. Baca Gran follows the same pattern. 170 degrees two weeks ago. 180 now. That's a 10 degree climb in 14 days. When volcanic systems heat up this quickly, it signals one thing. More fluid is entering the system than escaping. The balance tipped. Recharge exceeds discharge. And that imbalance has to resolve somehow. Here's where it gets critical. After yesterday's return of seismic activity, monitoring stations detected something else, ground tilt. Tiny angular changes measured in microradians, but consistent across multiple sensors. When ground tilts, it means the deformation center shifted slightly. The bulge moved. Now move. That movement correlates with pressure redistribution underground. Fluid migrating through new pathways, finding weaker zones. The weekly bulletin mentioned persistent trends. Let me break that down. Persistent doesn't mean stable. It means relentless, uninterrupted. Every single monitoring parameter maintains an upward trajectory without reversal. Ground uplift, rising monthly, rising monthly, seismicity, cycling between swarms and brief pauses, temperature, Climbing steadily, gas emissions, increasing, there's no downward trend anywhere in the data. Have you ever felt an earthquake while sitting in your home? Residents in Pozzuoli don't just feel them occasionally. They live with them, a tremor while cooking dinner, another while children sleep. Magnitude 2 isn't destructive, but it's absolutely felt. Walls vibrate, dishes rattle, sleep interrupts. Now imagine experiencing that 10 times in one day, 20 times, 50. Drop your answer in the comments because understanding how people respond to prolonged volcanic unrest matters. It shapes evacuation planning. It determines who leaves early and who waits too long. Let's talk about what the official alert system isn't telling you. Right now, Campi Flegre sits at yellow alert level. Yellow means attention. Monitoring intensified. Potential for activity. But here's the disconnect. Yellow was declared years ago when uplift measured 15 millimeters monthly. Now it's 25. Yellow was appropriate when annual seismicity totaled 300 events. This year exceeded 1500. Yellow made sense when femoral temperatures hovered at 70 degrees. We just measured 180. So why hasn't the alert level changed? Bureaucracy moves slower than geology. Risk assessment committees require consensus. Political concerns about tourism and property values influence decisions. Compare this to what happened in Iceland before Fegredalsvöll erupted. Ground inflation. Increased seismicity. Rising gas emissions. Authorities raised alert levels progressively as data accumulated. Here, the gap between data and response widens daily. Evacuation drills happened twice this year in Pozzuoli. 
Good. Essential. But drills assume people know where to go, how to get there, and that roads remain passable. What happens if a swarm strikes during rush hour? What if the main evacuation route cracks from ground deformation? What if panic blocks exits? 24 people died. Not from lava, but from collapsing buildings during the earthquake sequence preceding the eruption. The eruption itself was violent but brief. The real killer was unpreparedness. First, acceleration. Not just uplift, but the rate of uplift increasing. If ground rises 25 millimeters monthly now, watch for 30 next month, 40 the month after. Exponential curves precede major events. Linear trends can persist for years. The August swarm delivered over 100 quakes in 72 hours. That's not tectonic stress releasing gradually, that's hydraulic hammering. Water and gas forcing pathways open. Third, temperature spikes at multiple locations simultaneously. If Pissiarelli jumps 10 degrees, while Bugger Grant stays stable, that's localized. Concerning, but localized. If both spike together, plus Sulfatara, plus coastal vents, that signals system-wide pressure increase. The entire reservoir is responding. Fourth, gas composition changes. Increased sulfur dioxide means fresh magmatic gas. Right now, emissions remain dominated by carbon dioxide and water vapor, consistent with hydrothermal sources. Fifth, deformation center, migration. If that center shifts landward or deepens, it changes everything. Deeper sources often mean larger reservoirs pressurizing. Monitor official channels daily. NDV publishes weekly bulletins. Read them. The Civil Protection Department issues updates. Follow them. Don't rely on social media rumors. Oh. Here's the reality. Nobody wants to state plainly. Campi Flegre will erupt again. Not if. When. Geology guarantees it. The only unknowns are timing and magnitude. Could be next month. Could be next century. Could be a small freedic explosion like the ones in the 1800s. Fur. Could be catastrophic like the ignimbrite eruptions 39,000 years ago that blanketed the Mediterranean in ash. Current data suggests we're nowhere near catastrophic. But we're also nowhere near stable. The system is charging. Pressure is building. The ground is warning us with heat, motion, and fractures. The earth beneath Pazuali is speaking, in steam, in tremors, in rising ground. The question isn't whether we're listening, it's whether we're ready to act, when the message gets louder. If this information matters to you, hit that subscribe button. Not for me, for yourself. Because when the next swarm hits, when temperatures spike again, when the alert level finally changes, you'll want real data and real analysis in your feed.